Hello everyone, Crydax here, and welcome back to our Satisfactory 1.0 playthrough. In the last episode, we got a bunch of this quantum -y stuff set up so that we could get infinite power shards, and boy do we have a lot of power shards. So that feels great. I can overclock everything willy-nilly. And I did one more thing after the stream, and I went ahead and set up an entire diamond factory. So let's go, let's go take a look at that diamond factory because it actually ended up working out pretty nice. Uh, the oil-based diamonds alternate is something I can definitely recommend because it makes it super easy to just find an area with oil that you haven't really tapped into yet and just turn it all into diamonds right there. So that's what we're doing up north here. And yeah, so now we have a ton of diamonds, which makes all the crystal, like time crystals are relatively cheap. I went ahead and overclocked our time crystal um, factory. And let's see. Yeah, it's over here. Gosh, I love how far we can go on one jump with the Mark VI belts. It's beautiful. We're going to make it all the way, I think. Yeah, it's right here. So yeah, all we did is we grabbed this oil, which is a pure node, and two normal nodes. And we overclocked everything, so that's a total of 1,200 oil. So two Mark II pipelines. And then we've got four particle accelerators. So this crude oil alternate's pretty awesome. Um, it's 200 a minute usage of oil by default into, uh, what is it, 40 diamonds. So it's five oil to one diamond which is not, not a bad ratio. And so, I, you know, we're basically getting 240 diamonds here off of these two pipelines a minute. Um, definitely using a decent amount of power, but we finished our nuclear power plant, so I'm getting almost 100 gigawatts. Uh, or we could say, for even more fun, 0.1 terawatts. Uh, I'm gonna use big words. But yeah, so here's our diamonds, and that goes on a mark rebuilt because 240 is less than 270 but uh we have more than enough diamonds now so I'm not really worried about that i could sink them if i wanted to sink the extras it might not be a bad idea but yeah that's basically all this is nothing too fa too fancy going on here and then i also want to go show you guys the finished result of the nuclear power plant because you've seen bits and pieces but i've mostly worked on finishing it off stream so you guys to get to see that because it's pretty cool looking not gonna lie i haven't done extensive testing but i'm pretty sure the most efficient way to fly is to maintain a vertical momentum and then you can take advantage of the fact that the game caps your falling speed and if you're fighting gravity constantly anyway, you might as well have vertical acceleration while you're doing it, right? And so by maintaining some vertical acceleration, you're still doing the same amount of gravity fighting as if you were maintaining level flight. Or is that, no, maybe that's not true. No, you're fighting more gravity by going up, I guess. But anyway, by, I, I'm pretty sure you do gain a little bit of distance if you kind of let yourself go up as you're going. And then once in a while, probably most efficient would be towards the end, you just fall sideways, you know, and since your fall speed is capped, um, basically you're not accelerating downwards for that time. And so that ends up paying you back for the time you spent going up. I think. Like I said, I haven't tested it extensively, but I did a couple tests and it seems to get you further when you do it that way. So yeah, here is the final nuclear plant. And we already showed the electromagnetic control rod factory that brings in the control rods, but here's the finished product of 12 fully overclocked nuclear plants with uranium fuel rods. We've got the water extractors nicely set up. I really like the way this turned out. I think it looks pretty good and, you know, 75 gigawatts is no joke. I, I might have overdone it, but 
you know, given how big we had to build everything, I feel like doing 12 wasn't that much harder than doing six. Um, it, it really, I don't know. Like it wasn't that hard to build this other half. And now I have 75 gigawatts instead of only 37 and a half gigawatts. I guess the difference is I did need to bring in a little bit more limestone, but this is about the right amount of power because we're using exactly 600 uranium. So you could do this on a normal uranium node, which is pretty nice. Um, you don't need a pure uranium node for this. And yeah, uh, as far as like, yeah, I think it was the right amount to build. And if you were playing further into the game and needing way more power, then you can start processing all the waste, right? Because we've got a solid, 300 waste, um, 300 uranium waste a minute, and so you could use that to create plutonium pellets. Uh, and what's the ratio? So it's four, this is a really weird. So the ratio, you would need five of these craftings to make a hundred non fissile plus. 25. So that's exactly 100 uranium waste to make 30 plutonium pellets. And then 30 plutonium pellets. Oh, I didn't mean to hit in. Dang it. Is it healthy to stand above the big bat? No, no, it's not. Uh, we did get more diamonds. And we finished the nuclear power plant. Uh, so it's 100 waste to 30 pellets. And then 30 pellets gets you 15 cells and then the 15 cells gets you half of a plutonium fuel rod and we have 300 waste so we'd be getting 1.5 fuel rods a minute from our 300 waste that we're making we are making 300 waste right did i or are we making 600 uh 25 a minute times 12. Yeah, that's 300. So the amount of power we would get from plutonium fuel is half of what we're getting, I think. Because we're, we're doing six uranium fuel rods a minute, and these have half the fuel value of plutonium. So basically, you can boost your nuclear power plant by 50% by setting up the plutonium stuff. Um, and I'm seeing if the rates are easily sloopable anywhere. Uh, this one seems fairly sloopable. You'd need four sloops, but you could double your pellets here if you were fully overclocked, it's not quite enough. But, yeah, so you could sloop that if you wanted. I think that's probably the best step to sloop. Or would this one be the better step? No, not this one. Um, I don't think this one would be very good to sloop because you would need a lot because we'd be making 90 pellets a minute, so. Yeah, and this one, we would need six manufacturers, so yeah, that wouldn't be good to sleep either. But yeah, uh, and then the plutonium waste uh, gets used to make the fixonium, right? And then the fixonium combines with Honestly, it's pretty cheap at that point to make the fuel rods. The The most expensive part of all this is the singularity cell. But then the Fixonium fuel rod is actually kind of bad. They, they're they way less, um, they're only 150, so that's one fifth of a uranium fuel rod. But the point here is that you have no waste, right? Plutonium waste is gone and the uranium waste is gone. So it's a waste-free process that certainly would be worth setting up again if you were doing like a an ultra long playthrough which i'm not we're gonna go try to win the game here in the next next few hours i mean we still probably need a few more than a 
few. We need a few, few hours. But we only have to set up two more normal parts, which is the superposition oscillators and the neural quantum processors. What's up, dudes? How goes it? This looks so small from up here. Whee! We need little squirrel wings so we can have a better glide ratio from on high. <laughs> Whoa, I didn't realize this thing does like a whole stream of whatever quantum nonsense. That's cool. Okay, so we need to automate the neural quantum processors. So I'm gonna add that to the to-do list so then we can see that. I always forget to do that. Okay. So it requires time crystals, supercomputers, and trigons. They're not used in anything. They're considered an elevator part. Um, I guess that's a good point. <laughs> but we still need to automate them for that reason. Or do I need to automate them? Yeah, no, you're right. For some reason, I thought these were used in something else. Um, so we only need 256 of these, which means I only need 128 of these. Which means I only need 64 craftings. Yeah, man, that almost makes me sad. Um, we will at least automate the superposition oscillators, though. Let's do that first. We were talking about it on the stream um, after the last episode, but the, the phase five requirements are not super hard. At least I think it was after the video was done recording. Well. Maybe you guys are hearing me say this twice, but uh, basically there uh, Snut himself was talking about it. It's not super hard on purpose because just getting this far in the game is mainly the challenge. So the challenge isn't meant to be huge numbers of space elevator parts. I do think the issue I have is I personally wish the game somehow forced you to automate it, but then the problem is then you're just basically telling the player, oh, if you just leave the game going overnight, then you'll have enough. And that's not fun gameplay either. So like making the numbers bigger doesn't make automating it to completion harder. So it's almost like there needs to be some sort of game master, digital AI game master that can tell if you've like automated it or if you're just cheesing it by, you know, manually moving things around. And there's no easy way to measure that, right? Because you could measure parts per minute, but how do you know if you're feeding it with a container? Like there's no real way to do that. Obviously, as the player, you just have to build those requirements in yourself. Um, you could always download a mod that makes it so that you need a ton more parts, but but again, you can just idle the game for five hours to get those parts. So is that really harder? I don't know. I don't know if it is, but superposition, oscillator, add to to-do list. Okay, so we need the dark matter crystals, crystal oscillators, wait, what is it? Oh, crystal oscillators, like these things. <laughs> Forgot what that was. I thought it was some other kind of crystal. Um, so it is made in the encoder, right? Uh, oh no, did the thing, ah, did the thing again. If you, uh, if you're traveling up and you open your inventory at the same time, it does weird things. Okay, so we need the dark matter crystals, oscillators, all clads, and some excited photonic matter, which we already have right here. So yeah, I mean, this makes sense to just build right next to it. Um, I think I'll build two of them. Oh, we ran out of power. I think I will build two of them. I 
may not need both, but it's not that much harder to build two than build one. Yeah, yeah, exactly, Burnt Cattle. Like, let people play how they want. I'm not saying the game should actually have those requirements. I'm just saying, like, I personally feel like the challenge of the space elevator stuff is made too easy by just slooping a bunch of stuff in containers. So, I don't know if slooping should be allowed on the... Uh, project assembly parts i think that's the first change i would want to make is you can't sloop project assembly parts that alone would help quite a bit with what feels like the cheesiest strategies it's still it still would be cheesable you would just need a lot more parts to cheese it and it would kind of especially once you're getting to like this stage of the game you're definitely going to want smart plating on it you know what i mean whereas with slooping you double the smart plating at each step. So that means even though you're needing more and more parts with more and more smart plating total, because each step you add halves the original smart plating, you kind of end up never needing very much smart plating is the bottom line with that. Okay, why don't I actually make this better? enough excited platonic matter uh yes yes it is 500 a minute <laughs> plenty gosh so many of these stupid spam bots these days i do not understand why twitch can't figure out that that sentence itself should just be banned Sometimes it feels like Twitch catches it, and other times it doesn't. It's weird. Okay, I have no reason not to overclock things. There's, We got 75 gigawatts for a reason. So this actually won't run at full rate with the photonic matter refeeding it. Um, so I might as well get the accurate rate then, which is going to be 312.5 over 250. No. 250 over 312.5 times um, 100. I did that wrong. So 80 times 2.5. Okay. So that'll be 500 a minute, which is the most we can make from that one building. Yeah, the problem isn't that they don't ban the bot accounts, it's that... Because the bot accounts just make millions of accounts. Okay, maybe not millions. Probably thousands. Tens of thousands? Probably tens of thousands of accounts. Um, at least with the number that comment on my videos, knowing that that's happening all over the world, it probably is actually tens of thousands. Alright, so there is our crystals, and what was the other thing? All clad sheets. Those are right here. On this one. So there's those two, and then we want to bring that over to this area. And 
And what was the other thing I needed? Dark matter crystals. Dork matter. Oh, thanks, B. Jonas. It is a nice group of belts. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it. It's mostly useless. The, the thing about a bus in Satisfactory is you just don't need most items most places. And... It, yeah, it just doesn't end up... Like, the supply of one belt often can't handle 50 different things at once anyway, so... It just... Basically, the difference where Factorio and this game differ a lot is A, building a bus is way harder in this game, and B, a single belt doesn't provide the same level of throughput relative to what machines need in this game as Factorio. At least with stuff like ore and ingots. Obviously, for these higher tier items, then the problem is one belt is too much. But you run into the same thing with Factorio. Like, at first, putting, you know, blue chips on the bus is way too expensive or whatever because just blue chips are so expensive at that stage of the game. But then eventually that just becomes cheap and it's not a big deal. Um, I want this to be there. I guess we need to bring over the dark matter crystals. Where even are those? Oh, they're right here. It's convenient. Um, what if we do a splitter? Some sort of weird. Bring the extras up here. Now the problem is I have no idea if I have enough. How many dark matter crystals are we making? Yeah, B. Jonas, part of the reason I did the bus is because it looks really cool. And that, that I've always wanted to do a bus in Satisfactory because I just think it looks really neat. Uh, which is a big reason why I did it. So, yeah. Alright, so we are making 60 a minute. Can make more. It's not fully overclocked. And I can always set up another one of these behind it if we need more. I'm feeling like it'll probably be enough. Guess we'll see. These belts do look really cool. The they're glowy, they're glowy bits. It's just really neat. It feels so different than the rest of the factory. jitters around. Okay, so now we have to connect up the output of dark matter to this guy. get recycled. I'm probably gonna need another... Well, no. Do these use dark matter residue, or do they... Yeah, these actually consume dark matter residue, because we need 30 to make the six crystals. So, unless I'm slooping these, there's not gonna be any... Yeah, that doesn't work. Uh, there's... What if the angle actually works properly for the first time ever? 
It does. It actually does. Look at that. Okay. And then that clip does. So I gotta bring it out. around. A little 4x4x4 four by four by four Rubik's Cube action. That's cool. Wow, it won't snap to any of that? I don't understand the snapping logic. I've done 100 hours of gameplay. I've done a lot of things. It still seems random when sometimes certain strategies work and other strategies don't. Very weird. Okay, but yeah, there's our, our super positions. And we'll just put a splitter right there. And get our dimensional depot. Storage container on top. And there you have it. Ta -da. Now, the question is, dark matter wise, I've, I think I have enough all clads. I'm not worried about that. Crystal oscillators, I don't think I have 20 a minute. Let's go look. Um, and I also don't have enough of these dark matter crystals, right? We only are making 60. Uh, we're making 75, but let's, let's double down on the dark matter. Crystals. And... I'm gonna have to modify this a little bit. I really didn't set this up in preparation for two of them. I don't know why. It would have been smart. It would have been smart. At least this one I can carry along. Just doesn't work. Did I build that in the wrong spot? No. Weird. Oh, there goes a lot of my dark matter. Just out of existence from deconstructing the pipelines. I am curious if the priority stuff works with the gases. I haven't been able to wait really no you gotta be kidding me okay you know what there we go I'm just gonna put it off to the side that should not be counting as clipping out of this garbage okay there's that and then the diamonds doesn't look great it's it's hard I, I feel like being super wasteful about all of your just having belts everywhere in a nice grid is really the key but it's not that's not exactly the efficient way to do it that's for sure oh 
Okay, there we go. So diamonds are now a thing. Dark matter's a thing. Power is a thing. More shards is a thing. Now we can use up a whole pipeline of dark matter residue. Smart splitter. Right output, overflow, and I'll do the awesome sink. So the problem now is that so the power shards are producing extra dark matter. I'm going to turn that off for a minute. The reason I want to turn it off is because we need to discover because these are basically going to be using up all of our dark matter residue. And I need to discover, can we prioritize dark matter residue by doing the same strategy you can do for fluids, which I did right here, or not. Which means I'm going to turn back on the dark matter residue producers, these two. They just use the reanimated SAM to make dark matter residue. And the problem, I, I probably need a valve, but even then I don't know if that's going to fix things. Let's at least get a valve going on this. Um, so that it can't flow back. And let's just flush the pipe network real quick. We'll empty it out. And then basically the question is, will this dark matter in here get used before the dark matter that's filling up? If it doesn't, we're gonna have problems, things are gonna jam up. If it does, then everybody's happy and it works great. I guess we'll just find out which way it goes. But basically, we wanna see this fluid buffer staying empty, and I'm kinda of thinking that's not gonna work. I'm guessing they changed the rules for gases compared to fluids. And now we can go check our crystal oscillators and see what we did for that. Those were way down in the corner of this. Go in here. Do we have two manufacturers going? I don't even know what the rates are on these things. Two a minute with overclocking. Okay, so I can get to five a minute with max overclock. Not very good. And it looks like I have the space here to fit more though. Let's see. jamming and that'll actually be the exact 10 a minute that we need so that worked out pretty conveniently Get back my floaty 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 jetpack I could do sloops it's true um, but that's eight sloops I don't really want to 
use the I'm gonna need all those sloops for the project assembly stuff we're doing soon. Power copy, paste, and paste. Now, do I have enough cable and quartz? Probably not. That's going to be the issue. Quartz crystal, cable 35 minutes, so I need 140 cable. There's no way I'm making 140 cable. Yeah, there's just no way I have enough of anything here. Um, the wire. Let's get going on a faster belt, at least. That might help. This wire is used in a lot of places. Off the belt. And then we get to upgrade all these little segments in between. Fun, fun, fun. Alright. Okay, well that should help a little bit. I don't know what our crafting rate of wire is. Because these are making reinforced plates, so that's the stitched wire going in there. Alright. Whatever, it's all automated. It's probably not fast enough, uh, but it's fast enough for me. That's my, that's my theory anyway. And now we've got superposition oscillators. Okay, let's check on our dark matter. Is this full? Yep, it is. Bummer. Bummer, dude. So that means There really is no way, huh? To prioritize gases. That's annoying. That's really annoying. I mean, if there is a way to do it, then it's even jankier than this. If, if I guess it might be possible with, like, weird pipe black magic. But it certainly isn't possible with using pressure. So... then yeah I know gases aren't affected by head lift but I was hoping that gravity pressure still might at least do the same thing it does for fluids at least so that you can prioritize it you know where things at higher things have higher pressure and higher pressure is gonna flow first um That's not the case. So, the good news is I have a lot of diamonds and we're sinking the dark matter crystals. So what that means is I should feel free to make enough. Yeah, I feel like the actual way to do this is to have two separate dark matter 
pipelines is really the, the best way to do it. Um, is there another use for this I'm forgetting? I mean, Fixonium, I guess. I don't know what the other two are yet. But let's grab those superposition doodads, oscillators. I only need a hundred. Um, and we'll go finish our research. <laughs> yes, that would be true in real life, B. Jonas. Um, I just more mean from a gameplay perspective, not... Well, that was annoying. Uh, not being able to prioritize which gas gets used first is kind of annoying. And again, if there is a way to do it, it's probably something with black magic understanding of satisfactory pipes. Like, in fact, we may try... There is one... There is one thing we can try. Um... That works for fluids. Fertile uranium. Ooh. That's... To get... Even more plutonium, I guess, out of your... Your stuff. Alright, let's figure... Figure this out. Ta-da! Milestone All but one reached. thing done. Instant travel between chosen locations will be possible as soon as the main and satellite portals are built and paired. Do not ask me how it works. Not because I don't understand dimensional dispersal theory and the cross-warp applications of liminal peer-regulated parallel fibrillator nanocells, for example. But because you do not need to know. You go in one end, you come out the other. It's a door. Thankfully, the construction of project part number 12, the ballistic warp drive, can be automated and requires no manual input from you, so I'd say we're relatively safe. If you disagree about my assessment of your capabilities, you are free to attempt a study and replication of either portal or warp technology after you're done with project assembly. Hmm. Okay, so I do need some dark matter crystals built up here. So let's do that, and then pasta. I need quite a bit of pasta. Yum, yum, yum. But yeah, okay, so the the thing that I do know works via black magic with liquids is that the flowing, if you have one on the bottom, the, the flowing one on the bottom takes priority over one that comes in from the top. So if I were to do something like this. Uh, no, here. And connect that and connect that. And then put a junction here. And then this one goes up higher. down onto that one. I believe that actually does prioritize this one. Um, but I'll have to turn these back on to find out. seem to be flowing, unfortunately. In fact, this one seems to be taking priority now. What the heck? I feel like that's the opposite of what I've been told fluids do. What if I put a powered pump? Does that do anything? Worth a shot. Hmm. Doesn't seem like it. Well, maybe they're splitting. 
Absies? I don't even know what's happening. It's not a fluid. Yeah, I know, it's some some plasma or whatever, but it's it's gas as far as as far as the gameplay is concerned. Uh okay, so anyway. These are basically, they're using 30 residue and producing 25, so these are doing 5 residue per cycle. So 50 residue per minute if they're running, which means I would need at most 100 residue per minute supplemental. So I'm just going to set that to 100 and turn this one off. So that way I'm making only a hundred a minute. Now that will, that won't mess with power shards because power shards actually make excess. Yeah, and that's not even counting um, the fact that I've slipped it. So that should do what we need. And I am making enough of the dark crystals to use all that up, yeah. I have enough diamonds for that. So we are good to go on all that. Uh, except, what are the time crystals? Again? That's just straight up diamonds. Okay. Cool, cool. All right, so now we can turn our eyes to completing phase five and winning the flipping game. Question one, how is our powder tower going? It looks like it's not going very well. We've got the top one filled and that's it. So we're going to need a lot more powder. Um, which means we're going to need another copper node. Looks like there's some impure copper to the southwest. So let's go. Let's go make some powder. Oh, there's an alternate for the dark matter that yeah. I think we actually have a hard drive to research right now. Oh, I forgot to start one. Okay. Um, seems like a really weird way. To, uh, that's using a lot more fuel. Because then you're using 24 rocket fuel and 12 packages. Because it goes from packaged to unpackaged. So that's spending those packages as well. All for the sake of not spending one power shard? But a power shard isn't even that crazy expensive. I don't know, that, that feels like a weirdly bad... I don't understand this one. Um, anything else cool? Oh, there it is again. Cloudy diamonds. We already have our oil-based diamonds, so I don't need that. Alright. Well, whatever. Uh, let's go get some more copper powder. And then... That goes into a particle accelerator with pressure conversion cubes. So I am going to need a lot of these. Um... Because the ballistic warp drives... <laughs> a large amount of force is required for the warp drives to activate, so sticking them to rockets was a logical next step. Additionally, results improved immensely when the observers were further removed from the warp drives upon activation. Um, so these are going to need a thousand singularity cells, but really only 500. And 500 of those is going to require 50 more pasta, but really only 25. Okay, so I do need a little bit of pasta for the singularity cells, but it's not going to be very much. So I need 1,025 pasta, which means 500 and we'll just call it 525 pressure conversion cubes. So... Let's get that set up. Um, I am going to need to grab a lot of stuff over here. So 525 pressure conversion cubes means... 
525 RCUs. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And a half. And then that means... 275 fused frames, basically. I know it's not 262 or whatever. Um, 3, 4, 5... Okay, so that's the fused frames and the RCUs that we need, and then we'll go over to the copper area and set up some powder making along with the pressure conversion cube making. We'll do that all over by the copper. Which is where? Over here? Oh, straight south. Is it? Oh, is it those? No. Ah, down here. All right. Get that mining. Haven't done this in a while. I still think it's weird you can't blow these up with dynamite. I feel like it sort of makes sense so you couldn't accidentally blow up like a caterium or quartz, but even then, by the time you have dynamite, I don't know. Maybe there's some fancy reason for it, but I think I would like if you could blow them up. I don't think these are actually powered. Oh, they are. Cool. Yeah, exactly, Vatamouse. That's why I'm getting a little extra, is because of that slooping issue. Um, because if you get exactly half of everything to sloop it, then you're going to end up with just a few short, which is really annoying. Alright, so there's 600 copper a minute, and where do I put... This feels like a good spot for this little factory. Um... Do my little blueprint here. Of some thing on the end. Get rid of some foliage. Yeah, it's really annoying too because you can put in the sloops before you even power on the machine and it still won't double the first one. So that is a bit frustrating. I wonder, it, it might work if you were to like pull the items out mid craft and then restart the craft. I might try that, uh, just because I'm curious. Ooh, too close. Um, but yeah, it is it is a bit frustrating. Uh, what am I doing? Build this guy. Merger. That's eh, perfect. Okay, so we need to smelt 600, which is 20 smelters. Oh wait, we have infinite power shards. So it's really only like 10. Uh, let's see, let's get power. Oh, I already have power, nice. We'll build our smelters blueprint. Here on the edge. Build 12, because that's nice and easy. And then we'll have to deconstruct. Just that belt, yes, please. Thank you. And I don't need to improve the mark of belt, because it's only 600 a minute. Of course that clips right through the belt. Just, I feel like no matter how I build things, I always end up getting a wire clipping through a belt somehow. Even though the the actual amount of space 
you know, like if the belt was just a little higher or a little lower, it'd be fine. But it just always manages to get right in the way. Oh, I forgot power shards. Okay, I'm fine, fine. All right, so there's a crap ton of copper, and then we need our constructor's blueprint. Uh, that's probably more than I need, actually. What's the rate here again? <laughs> I literally, like, I only need two constructors for this. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Um, Check this over. And then there's the copper powder, and then I need the assembler blueprint. I have not upgraded. Like, where is my assembler? Ah, oh, right there. Still has Mark Four belts, so I may need to upgrade here. Is three enough for the pressure cubes? One a minute. So really, two point five a minute. So that's 15 a minute, and we need like 500. So yeah, that's only like 18 minutes. Did I do the math right? Thirty-five minutes. Uh, I built this backwards. Nice work. Getting ahead of myself here. What does the powder go in? Oh, the particle accelerator. Oh, okay, okay. The powder is not yet. I need to make these first. Got it, got it, got it. Okay. Now I'm tracking with my own brain. Okay, so we're gonna do one of these fed by storage container. this. Used frames and RCUs. Okay. And then you guys are going to be PCCs. Fully everything. Okay. And then we'll need particle accelerators to make the pasta. And those are going to go at a rate of 2.5 a minute. Which is 400 minutes if I just build one of them. So I'm going to need to build a lot more than one of them. Because I don't want to wait 400 minutes. If I build 10 of them... Gosh, 10 accelerators though? That's insane. Um... Does the thingy even fit in a Blueprint Mark II? Particle accelerator? It does, okay, I need to set this up then. Um, yeah. We need to set up our Particle Accelerator Blueprint, because I'm gonna need a lot of them. Um, seven, no, I guess we start with the pipe. doesn't go to the fluid version. Okay, so here. There. Two of these. And then... I 
think for simplicity, I'm gonna do the output over here too, kind of like I do with the manufacturer blueprint. And we'll bring, bring it through, through the, through the hole. Inputs come over like so, pipe like so. Frick. Oh, yeah, we already solved this problem. Come out to the side. Noodle, I think, looks a little better in this case. can just put it right here and that won't clip with anything yeah that'll go underneath uh, that belt so so there we go there's our particle accelerator all hooked up everything's good to go go ahead and save that accelerator x1 mark 6 I guess Icon, particle, save, blueprint. All right. So there's that. We got that ready to go to make all the pasta. How long did we say this needs to run? I already forgot. 30 minutes, I want to say it was. I just watched Josh's Let's Game It Out video, so now I just feel like whatever I do spaghetti-wise is nothing compared to that. <laughs> oh man, is it horrible and delicious at the same time. Um, okay, so yeah, we need all of this copper powder to be going somewhere while we're waiting. Uh, industrial storage container. So the problem here is I'm only making, yeah, I really need to sloop this. And we're not getting 750 a minute. So I guess I don't even need the second slooped one. Because we're only getting 600 a minute. So that means I'm only getting 200 copper powder a minute. Which means I need 500 minutes of this? Is that right? To get enough pasta? Yeah, we're only getting enough to craft one per minute, which makes two pasta per minute. So yeah, I, I'm gonna need more copper than this, is what that means. That's what that means. Now, wait a second. That's not consuming all the copper ingots. Uh oh. I guess the copper ingots it backed up. That will stop soon. So these are these are just emptying out their buffers, I think. Yeah. Should be, anyway. All the buffers will empty, and once all the buffers empty, we should be consuming all the copper. Um There's more copper up there. There's just a single normal node though. 
Chopper over there, that's a pure node. I could get twice as much. Hmm. I mean, I've got two of these running now. Maybe we'll be okay. Let's get the particle accelerator stuff built. Uh, I am gonna do... floating platform nonsense, and you guys can judge me all you want. I've given up on, on making things look perfect. power. Need power to fly. Alright, so you... I would like it to be lined up with the global grid at least. And we said, and then the blueprint fits on a 5x5 five five for our particle accelerator. Yeah. So I can just tile them lengthwise like this. We'll just have to see how many can fit for 5x5. Five five. It's slightly more than one, you know, they don't quite use the full. I won't quite need 10 of these blueprints, is what I'm getting at here. Probably need, like... Do I really need 10? I think 8's fine. That's 4... 5... 6... 7... Eight. Okay, so then we should be able to grab this blueprint. see how much we need to nudge it, if at all. It accepts one, one nudging. Okay. Lock and nudge. And this is going to take a minute to build because of the quick wire and all the other resources. So I'm glad we're building it now. I have to build it in two chunks. Uh, this recipe uses no fluids, so I do not need to connect up the pipes. This is my large, large hadron collider. <laughs> uh, and then we're just going to use storage containers to feed things, because that is the way. Thing one, thing two. Copper powder, I will just hook up with an actual belt. I will have to go fetch the stuff that's over there by hand, which will require a few trips. Uh, and then we need power connected here. Clipping, as it loves to do. All right, sweet. So then this is where the pressure conversion cubes go and then all the powder. And that will take care of those. Okay, what are the other what are the other main things we need to be aware of? So the AI let me open this menu. AI expansion servers are made in quantum encoders at a pretty high rate, four per minute. So that's already only 250 minutes with no clocking or slipping. 
So that's not going to be a problem because when you clock and sleep, you go five times faster. So that's only 50 minutes of this in a single quantum encoder. Um, that's no big deal. The ballistic warp drive is done in a manufacturer. 200 minutes worth. Again, that drops down to 40 minutes. No problem. Singularity cells. We said we were going to need, like, what, 1,000? I think. Or was it 500? I think it was just 500, actually. 500. Yeah, it was 500. Okay. Those are manufacturers. And then what's the other thing called? Oh, the, the biology... Biochemical Sculptor. Those are made in a blender with water and trigons and a box of scraps. Um, yeah, I mean, this is all just kind of... I really should have left all the buildings to make these, but it's all pretty chill. Oh, you know what? This is always going to look backed up because I'm consuming exactly 600 minute. If I fully overclock it, then it'll actually consume the backed up part. There is a way to activate all the desired crafts. You need to complete any cheap recipe with the sloop in the machine before changing. Ah, that makes sense. So you have to basically burn the unslooped craft on anything else, and then the machine considers itself slooped. That's good to know. That's good to know. Um, I guess I can get started on this. Put the cubes in the bottom, and then the... Yeah, I mean, it probably won't be worth the time, but if you did have the exact amount and you didn't want to make, like, an extra of something, it would save you the hassle. But yeah, I, I don't plan to do it for most of these things, because, like we already talked about, I can just grab an extra, um, you know, 25 and I'm good to go. Okay, so there's at least... Gosh, it's so fast. Just already in the distance. Uh, there's the powder. Why... Did I think... I wouldn't need a million sloops for all this. I kind of forgot about sloops when I was thinking about these. So yeah, I definitely want these to run for a long time. Yeah, that's 400 minutes, and I don't have the sloops for more right now. Interesting. Okay, well, I am slooping some other stuff at, at home, so let's work on that. So yeah, the pasta one is going to run for the longest, for sure. I need to remember what else I'm slooping. Am I slooping anything over here? I am. Wow! There's been two wasted sloops. I forgot I slooped homing rifle ammo. Ever, ever so many years ago. I've just been playing without those sloops forever. Um, these ones were set up to make assembly director systems perfect. So that'll be... I need the adaptive control units first, though. Nothing over here is slooped still. Oh good. Uh, I do have my aluminum slooped. I could... I could unsloop that, because the amount of aluminum I'm spending now is not that massive. Um... Okay. And then I deleted my setup with the manufacturers back here. I guess I did. This is where I made my last phase of stuff. Okay, so... Coming back over here. Where do we got the sloops? Is there one over with the rocket fuel? 
Oh, speaking of rocket fuel and ionized fuel, I might need to make a little more ionized fuel. Now that I have ample power shards. And then we're not slooping trigons. Or am I? No, I decided to unsloop that because we had plenty. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. And then finally, over on this end, I was slooping some things, but I might be done now. Oh, also like turbo motors and whatnot. Did we unsloop all that? These, I think, are all unslooped. Nope, nope, we're still slooping. Use modular frames. That's no longer necessary. Definitely do not need to be slooping these diamonds anymore, because I have all the diamonds in the world. All the diamonds money can buy, or crude oil can buy at least. And I probably don't need to be slooping time crystals at this point. I guess it depends. Did I... Uh, where are they? Oh, they're down there. Yeah, I have a full, I have a full thing of time crystals. But we're good. Alright, well that gives me a good amount of sloops back. Um, I also don't need to be sleeping tower shards anymore. I've got plenty of those. And finally, these don't have sloops. Okay, so I've got 19, 19 back. Sweet. Sweet, sweet, sweet. So going back to our particle accelerating. If we've got four of them running, then that's only a hundred minutes worth. Yeah, there are 106 summer sloops on the map. That sounds like about right. I've probably found I don't know, like 40, maybe 30 something, and I haven't been trying to. I feel like there should be a few more, but the problem is it there's not any super late game. What am I trying to get at? It's like there's no Metroidvania locks on areas of the game other than the, you know, as soon as you have uh, whatever these are called, Nobilesks, you can already get to everywhere in the game. So it feels like if they were going to add more, they would need to add some other sort of fancy technology that locks off parts of the map so you can't get too many in the early game. Um, I don't know. <laughs> the current duping. Yeah, I mean, you could just cheat, yes. I think before I cheat, I would get some sort of mod that creates some sort of crazy difficult recipe. Or someone was recommend, or recommending or talking about, was it one of you guys? The possibility of like, what if extra phase five completions gave you more summer sloops? You know, something like that. But those sorts of things would only matter in an ultra long playthrough. Okay, so this is running. I need to go get all of the, here, let me throw away all the crap I don't need. Rocket fuel, frames, all clads, regular fuel, rubber, plastic, iron, stators, random stuff, random stuff, random stuff. Put all those in there. Oh, do I have sloops in the cloud? No, they're all out of the cloud right now. Okay, so now I can go grab a bunch of copper powder. Let me make a little launcher for myself. You object thing? Is there some sort of bug that you're talking about? Oh, you managed to break EA with you object limit. Um, I see what you're saying. Uh, no, I think there's still an issue. I, I want to say they mentioned they like raised the cap somewhere somehow, but it's still... I think there's still a limit. Alright. 
take all, take all. Can't even fit it in one inventory. It's a good problem to have. That means I have a lot. Alright, back we go to Acceleration Town over here. And yeah, there's just a lot of little micro-crafting to get done. Get these particle accelerator doodads going. Um, okay, let's put some in here. No! Frick. Please tell me, I think it only grabbed... Yeah, I didn't see anything else on the belt. <laughs> that could have been a lot worse. Oh man, that's funny. Why don't I do this? The merger. Uh, I need a control click on powder. Is what I needed to do. Okay. So that'll last for a minute. And we did get all of these slooped, right? Wanna make sure we're not wasting, yeah, version cubes. Okay. And then one more trip here and then I'll start working on the I don't know the biochemical sculptors I guess Probably about a third of what we need total is done. So we're probably going to need to tap another copper vein to make all this copper powder. It's kind of an absurd amount of copper powder. Kind of an absurd amount. Gosh, are these consuming all of that too? Four of these are consuming a thousand per minute, so not quite, but pretty close. Pretty close. All right, let's grab the rest of the cubes we've got. I said this would take 30 minutes, so these are probably nearing completion, I'm guessing. Yeah, we're already on the last stack of fused frames for both of these. Um, yeah, so those will those will be done in a few minutes. So fast! Oh my gosh, Mark VI belts are nuts. Alright, so let's work on the biochemical sculptors. So these guys... Need, so we need 250 craftings of them. No, 125 craftings is it. So 125 ADS, and whatever 125 times 80 is... Trigons. I need 10,000 trigons. That's not zero. That's actually enough that we're going to have to need two containers of them. We shall let the trigons be trigons in a container. Uh, so yeah, we should have half of what we need then already. Because that's 4,800. And then that's made in a blender. Did I look at the rate? No, I didn't. So the rate is two a minute, AKA 10 a minute, which gives me a hundred minutes. So I'll probably want two of these, but we got to work our way backwards first. We need the 125 ADS, which means we need 125 ACUs. And that means I'm just going to triple it. 350 wiring. At least it's not anywhere near as much as we needed last time. We needed an absurd amount last time. 350 wiring. Like 
3500 cable. Alright, let's set up Manufacturers X2 Mark V. Let's get this going somewhere over here. With storage containers. And five. There's my little little mountain. Mountain of success, we'll call it. And then we're gonna start with Oh no, here's something nice. We can make I'm actually gonna do automated speed wiring, so then I don't have to have a setup for flipping whatchamacallits? Assemblers. Um How much wiring do I need though? We just said 350, so this is only 10 minutes. Nice. Um, then I'm actually going to short a sloop. There's something slooped somewhere that I want to undo, but what was it? Somewhere. I feel like I had. Oh, wow, there's the copper powder. I feel like there's something else I slooped, but I don't remember what. Yeah, aluminum could be a good one to stop at this point. Get those two sloops back. Because, I mean, I have enough stuff built up that I don't think the rates are going to be much of a problem right now. We'll see if I regret this. You never know. <laughs> Write down all my sloop locations. I'm playing Mist, you know, have my notebook. Yeah, we de-slooped everything over here, too. No, I didn't. Wait, I still have one going. Aha! Time crystals. Found you. Okay, so there's a few more. But yeah, that's all the sloops we got. I know, it is nuts. I only had one machine doing scrap. It's because sloops are so strong. It was literally still faster than one belt could even handle. Uh, I know, I guess I could do two machines worth of, or two belts worth of scrap, but it just didn't feel necessary. I had plenty. Alright, haste to you. There we go. Okay, so I need 350 wiring, which means I need, like, 100 staters, 2,000 wire, and a single stack of high-speed connectors. Okay. This is pretty easy. Your starter aluminum does eight. Yeah, that is certainly a lot bigger than we've been building. Uh, Sweet. So that'll get going. I needed a little bit more wire, I think. Let's go grab that. It's just down here. You know, I actually... The more that I've thought about it, the more I think trucks are the truth in this game. Um, because unlike... I don't know how much wire I need. I'm just grabbing a lot. Uh, unlike trains and unlike belts and I guess similar to... They're actually more similar to drones than anything else. Because you can easily... Like, you don't have to build something along the way, right? You don't, All you have to do is have a path that you can drive on. But this game has a lot of natural roads, right? Like, I mean, literally this one is one of the more clear ones. But there's a lot of even other natural roads that you can follow to get around the map. So my thought, maybe for a next run, is actually just using way more trucks and just kind of having trucks go all over the place because you do have to drive the route once, but once you've driven the route, now you can just add more trucks to that route. And then you can stuff multiple things into the same truck route. You can get up to two belts on one truck stop, 
and you could have trucks stop at multiple stops in a row. So like you could do six belts from location A to location B pretty easily. So you just have three truck stops. You drive one route where it stops at all three and then goes to the other three. And then you would just make sure you sink all of the excess so that it never backs up. And then you can transmit multiple items uh, and you have to sort them out on the other end. Yes, it's true, but I don't know. It seems like that could be a good way to to work with things in the late game. So that way you're not having to build, you know, pathways to every single thing. You can just have a truck stop and then take things to a central truck stop area. But it is kind of annoying. I mean, there's certainly pros and cons to it. Okay, how much wiring do we have? I also didn't do the math right. Is I think I overestimated, but I just want to double check I didn't underestimate on this. So, for wiring... So we said we needed 125, and I need 2.5 times 125. So I really only need 312, yeah. So... And I already have more than half of that. Sweet. Okay. And are, am I going to run out of staters? No, because I put in 130 staters. It's more than 10 times that amount. And I need less than 10 times this amount. So we should be late. Okay, so that is good to go. And then... What's it called? Control units. So adaptive control units. Now we need to grab the items for this. So we need 125 HMFs. No, no, no. I need half. Oh, uh, why do I confuse myself like this? I need 125 of these, which means I only need half as many of those craftings. So I need 350 circuit boards, basically. And I only need like 70 modular frames and 150 computers. That all works. Put half back. Heavy modular frames. And then we said uh, circuit boards. Okay. If you have multiple trucks traveling in the same area, you have to potentially avoid head-ons. Yeah. I, I think... As far as I can tell, they only deadlock if they are really head-on, because I have a crossing in my current truck path, and they've run for... I don't even know how many hours are we talking at this point. Um, they've run for at least 50 hours without stopping, so I think they can figure out how to cross. At some point, they should have ended up trying to be in the same spot at the same time, and they did it successfully. What I don't know is what exactly are the conditions that create deadlocks or not. So it makes it hard to know exactly what you're trying to avoid. But... Anyway. Okay, so I needed 350. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Uh, 100, 200, 350. We are there. Okay, sweet. So now we can switch this to the next thing, which is adaptive control units. Um, though I do need to soak up all the items. I need to grab the wire out of here. Otherwise it'll pollute, pollute things. So I need to select that get the items, and then change it. Okay. And now we should be able to shove everything into the chests. Yeah, when, when, the, when you're far away from the path, I think it doesn't matter as much. But even if you were close, I wonder what would be the conditions to guarantee your deadlock free, rather than just hope. And pray. Oh, I need to move all this. This one. Perfect. 
All right, that should be everything we need for these guys. What's the rate here? 10 a minute. So I only need like 12 minutes of this. Beautiful. And then those adaptive control units will turn into assembly director systems with supercomputers. So 125 of those means I need only 62.5 supercomputers. Which is very, very few. I'll just, I'll do 75. But very few of those. Um, <laughs> belts are certainly a surefire way. Trains are trains are surefire too, though. I, assuming you signal correctly, which is not really that hard to do. Um, trains are a surefire way, and drones. Drones work fine as long as you have fuel, which is again just like once you have fuel properly provided, it's not going to stop working randomly. So. As far as I'm concerned, tractors are the only thing that even can go wrong, and they don't go wrong easily. You just, as long as you're knowing that they can't have head-on collisions, I think you'll be fine most of the time. So, okay, so we've got everything we need now for the assembly director systems, and we've got pretty much everything we need for this. I guess I should get the water it's only 25 water a minute, so that's not problematic. We have water here already. So there's no problems there. Make the biochemical sculptors. I am going to need my assembler blueprint here. I make... I forget which item they were just looking at. Um, I think it was the assembly director system, yeah. There's no version of this that doesn't have that, so we'll have to wait for the sloops and switch it over. Uh, let's see, power. I will the classic. Power. We've got floor power over here. There we go. And yeah. Okay, well, I think we'll call this an episode for future YouTubians uh, at an hour and 40 minutes, and we're going to have to do some stuff. So I'll probably do a little bit of this busy work between this episode and the next one. Um, so we're probably only a few episodes away from actually finishing the game. But if you're here live today, don't leave. Uh, we're going to keep streaming. So other than that, we'll call this call this day, as always. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments. And I'll see you guys in the next episode.